Welcome everyone. Good morning. So today is uh, the first day of the Air Realm. It's Monday morning and we've made it through the Earth Realm and it's perfect timing as this finally getting to springtime here in Connecticut and um, and it's really fitting that we move into this air realm phase. So, um, yeah, a little bit about the air realm. Um, in terms of the way that this um, approach is going, it's based in the ancient alchemy of uh, the science of development or process of how we move through different phases in our lives and how we develop ourselves on a psychological, spiritual, physical, uh, emotional, uh, really on all levels. And what these ancient alchemists started to recognize is patterns and the way that we develop uh, on a personal, even uh, moving towards a transpersonal level, these different levels different phases that we go through and they started to see that there were these um, sort of analogs or there were these um, combinations in nature. When they looked at chemistry they started to see that there were chemical events happening that seemed to reflect um, the nature, the, the dynamic uh, nature of processes that we go through. So they started to see these symbolic uh, similarities occurring in nature and because we are a part of nature, they started to look to nature to understand more about the fundamentals of what these changes are for us. And because of that, we are able to unite all of the major uh, psychospiritual disciplines, um, mystical traditions, and all the rest because ultimately everything goes back to um, being connected and reminded of our place in nature. Um, the challenge can often be, as we all know, that as spiritual beings we sort of identify or we can really identify with the part of ourselves. Good morning, Hella. Uh, we can overly identify with this very lofty part of us, our spiritual nature because there's a part of us, right, that um, we know isn't necessarily from here. We don't necessarily feel comfortable here. And we are um, trying to find our way through this world. So the alchemist knew, as in all the disciplines, uh, that in order to be fully compatible with this planet, in order to be really adapted to this planet so that you can not only survive it but to do good things in it. Um, you really have to attend to uh, the ways of nature and and attend to the dynamics of nature. And the more that you're not only aware of the ways of nature but you have a kind of embodied or felt sense of uh, the dynamics of nature. So, Air Realm 1 we make it up, we pop through the soil, right? Um, in alchemy they say air is uh, sublimatio, uh, sublime, uh, the movement towards uh, sublimation or transforming things from an earthy level to an exalted level. And <clears throat> we're on the ground floor of that. We're just peeking out of uh, the, we're surfacing uh, up from the earth and it's you know we get the sunlight we get the oxygen we get the to breathe in and and it's just this first part of connecting there's a Taoist technique that we do where we're squatting down you know and the hands are just kind of flat over the ground maybe about an inch or so above the ground and your hands are moving over the surface of the earth and you're imagining 
as the Earth is spinning thousands of miles per second, right, uh, uh, spiraling around through space, it's spinning out this Earth energy. This, um, you know, they, it's found in the uh, Schumann resonance. But there's an energy flowing out from the Earth, and it's flowing up from the surface up into the atmosphere, right? So we're like fish swimming in it, essentially. But right at the surface level is where it first surfaces. It first comes out into the air. And that's this amazing point of contact. It's come from the center of the earth and it's reaching out as it goes out to the surface of the earth. Our hands are there to, to meet it and to gather it and to channel it through us and to bathe it up through us, kind of like a, you know, through our roots, through, the, through our energetic roots, up through our beingness. And as it ascends towards the heavens and reaches um, towards the, the outer uh, field, the kind of, you know, the, uh, what would you call it, the, um, your, um, your aura field, the earth has an aura field as well. And as it goes out, it's reaching more and more into that collective aura field of the earth that's merging more and more, synapsing and connecting with the other planets and with the universe. So... As we connect with this, we're connecting with something continuous that's flowing up through us and merging and connecting with that synaptic connection with the one. So not only are we contacting it when it first surfaces, this intelligence, this wisdom, this power that Mother Earth is that keeps us alive in these human forms, right? We have this opportunity to be animated. Again, that word anima coming from this um, this feminine enlightenment, um, the, the Mother Earth enlightenment. So in this place, we're both connected with that wisdom, but because of the kind of quantum connection, we're now in a field that is merging with, rising up from the surface, merging with uh, um, the heavenly self, the higher self. And so uh, first bit of air is about how we relate in the world. Air in general and alchemy uh, and all the alchemical arts are is considered the realm of mindfulness, of, of thought, of thinking. In the Myers-Briggs, it would be considered the T part of the, uh, uh, like if you were an ENTJ, for instance, the T would be for thinking. You're a thinker. Um, and that's the opposite of feeler, which is sort of like, Air is thinking and water is feeling. So it's this opposite um, nature there. And the air realm is just above the earth realm, right? The earth realm is where the kind of plan of action, the kind of womb of this new creation is formed and, and perfected. But then it pushes it up into the earth and that's where it really comes to life. It comes to meet the life and the environment around us. Uh, something I know just a tad bit about, but I like the philosophy of permaculture in general, is that it's really looking at how everything is interdependent, how everything works with everything else. And in the um, traditions of astrology using uh, Western alchemy and Eastern alchemy, um, the air realm is where we become mindful of how we relate to other people. Um, interpersonal dynamics, right? One-on-one -on -one sort of thing. So in that, we're reflecting on how we are in connection with others in all the different parts of our lives. There are some parts of my life that I'm, I feel I'm more in, um, I would say, in harmony and balance in my relations than in others, right? Um, I'm, maybe you have that experience as well. Um, and sometimes in areas of my life, good morning, David, uh, in, in areas of my life where um, I feel that I'm most connected and most aware, I'm not always so much, right? Um, I, for, with my kids, for instance, that, that for me is uh, kind of job number one or, or reason number one for being alive. Yet, I find myself um, uh, checking out and being sort of there with my kids, you know. 
um, because I'm thinking about Solab or I'm thinking about, um, you know, work or something. Typically, those are the things I think about. And uh, for instance, my son came to me, he's five years old, and and he came to me wanting this video game. And and um, and I said, oh, no, no, you can't. That, that's not a good video game. You can't do that. And he says, but you said yesterday that, um, oh, that's wonderful, you know, when I asked you about it. And my wife, Andrea, was there, and she says, oh, that means he wasn't listening to you. Uh, he just says that's wonderful because he's trying to get you um, to move on because he's somewhere else. Uh, I, even when my daughter, she's eight now, when she was, I don't know, maybe three or four, she used to put her little hand in front of me when she's talking to me and waving and go, where are you? You know, she'd say, where did you go? Where do you go when you are not here, when you're not present? I, yeah, that was a really good question because even at that moment, I, I wasn't really quite clear exactly where I went, but I went somewhere. In other words, I wasn't very present with um, with that moment, even though I felt there. So, you know, uh, this is all about how do we relate to others and, and really kind of owning that uh, bit of it. Um, the imperative, the goal is, or the, the inspiration is to kind of come up out of our little sort of, you know, womb and come poke through the earth and then start reaching out, branching out and, and drawing in the, um, the resources and the connections and the relationships from the world above, right? So it's, it's building relationships with the environment that is a mutually supportive relationship. Even plants, right? They have this ability to know what's going on with the plants around them and they can respond in self-protection but they can also respond in mutual support so we have patterns uh, relationship patterns and and if you are conscious which air realm is asking us to be is to be more conscious you know earth realm is saying be more somatically sensory oriented be aware of your senses tune in to what it feels like to be in the embodied experience. But now the air realm is asking us to come up a little bit higher and say, okay, um, let's, let's take it to a finer level. Let's get beyond your own kind of insular sensory experience, your own perceptive field, and start coming out in your aura field, if you will, where you're meeting with the collective a bit more, and you're a bit more receptive, maybe a lot more receptive. So you're aware of what another is experiencing when you're having a conversation with them. So that you're actually calming and receiving so that you're not thinking about what you're going to say next, but instead you're being receptive and open. In, the, uh, in terms of the neurology, the uh, neuropsych part of it, they would say in terms of brainwave functioning, they would say that we're down in the low alpha range. And they call that a super high learning state. If you get into the upper alpha range, your brain starts speeding up and you become more sort of projective and thought, you know, think, 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 until you think yourself into this ivory tower, right? And above that is beta mind where you're just busy, busy, busy. So when we're in relationship and when we're in good conversation, we start to slow down and we stop thinking of what we're going to say. Instead, we start becoming receptive in this low alpha range. Um, below that is a theta range where it's almost hypnotic and certainly if you've had um, good training uh, with a therapist or with a um, coach or with a healer that is a point where we get to um, where we draw you out of your your thinking mind your busy mind and we start to draw you deeper into the kind of submersive mind so this range here just at the surface is just rising out of this dreamy state, right? Of that is can be be self-absorbed, um, can be insular, can be kind of um, your own little inner world, you know, your own little inner cave, right? Um, when the when we rise up to the surface and start branching out, our attention is moving out into the sublimatio, the the sublime realm of. Uh, wanting to connect to others, to draw in the sunlight, to draw in um, the the water, the air, the heat, all the earth is coming up through. 
So this is where we're really kind of connecting everything together, bringing the resources together. So not just so we can prepare for how we're going to deal with our clients or how we're going to um, deal with this next phase of our lives. The air realm is where essentially we open the door to our new practice or this next level practice or we begin this next phase um, of our own learning. This is really where we engage what our process in the world and where we actually, uh, it informs and enlightens the way that we engage each other. And so that's, that's an important part of it, right? Um, how, how do we break free from the patterns of the way that we relate to others in a way that moves us out of the habit-formed mind, the habitual mind, the, uh, the sort of loop, you know, that is sort of contextually cued. Um, you say to yourself, why do I, every time I'm around this person, I keep uh, having these same sorts of um, engagements with them. I keep getting drawn back in the same way of behaving. In the air realm, we're asking ourselves to become aware of what those patterns look like. In uh, neurolinguistic programming and hypnotherapy, um, we have different processes to help you look at the way you're doing relationship. And we're, we're asking uh, to come back. Yeah, the, uh, David, yes, exactly, um, those old patterns. We're, we're being asked to become aware of them. So a really great exercise is called the new behavior generator. And, and it's really looking, I mean, it could be made for many things, but it's an incredible way to, to really kind of look at the way you're uh, a pattern of relating to another. And so generally speaking, you go back to a memory of a time when you were relating to somebody and it wasn't a good outcome. And the idea behind it is to watch it like you're watching a short little film and you know, maybe like a little minute clip, like you're scrubbing through, you know, editing. And you start at the beginning where it starts, and then you watch yourself interact with this person, and you watch kind of the problem outcome. You go, ah, oh, that's not, yeah, that's the thing I don't want to watch. And you watch it again to see something different. You watch it three times as a magic number, right? And now you've seen yourself do it three times rather poorly, probably, because that's why you're choosing it. So we're, we rewind and we take you out of the scene, right? Because the way you've been doing it is your old habits. And then you imagine some model, somebody in your life or imagination that you know that if they were in this scene, they could do this, this relationship really well. So you pop them in the scene because your psyche already says they can do it really well. And then you watch them do it really well. You watch them again, and then you watch the other person, how the other person responds differently to them in a very positive way. And then you watch it a third time, and you watch the way the two engage each other in this new dynamic pattern, right? So we've gone from watching yourself do it very poorly, or poorly, to watching someone else do it really well. Your, your, your ego will easily give you that. Yes, I know you do it poorly, and yes, there are people that can do it really well. To bridge the gap between the way you do it and the way this person does it, this model does it really well, um, there can be a lot of ego blocks, like, well, he's just, or she is just gifted. I can't do it, right? But if you come back then and rewind it for the, you know, for the third round, you pop your model out, and then you pop yourself back in the scene, and now because your conscious mind has already seen it done really well by the model, it now knows the pattern. So we've just, by asking the psyche to say, show me somebody that actually can do it, we've actually uploaded into the conscious mind a model, uh, a way of doing it that really works. And we don't even know how it works, but we saw that it did work, right? And that's all we need to know. It's very important. So then we put ourselves back in and we tell our wonderful brilliant consciousness, our psyche, our, our, our brain, our intelligence, do me, let me do it just like the model did it. And so easily your, your brain says, well, I can do that. That's easy. So it shows you grafting in there and you doing the scene really well, just like your model. You, re, you watch it again. You say, well, you know, I probably wouldn't do it just like that, but I would probably do it like this. 
Now you've broken through the old pattern, right? And that's the whole goal, is to break through the old pattern. Um, how do we get from um, these old habitual patterns that tend to be very unconscious to, to making them conscious to consciously choosing a better way? Because you actually have to have a better way, right? Uh, in order to instill it. And then to have that better way become a part of your everyday experience, not just the sort of um, mental knowing because that is not enough. You need the air, fire, water, and earth. You need the intellectual, you need the, um, the intuitive fire, and you need the emotional inner water, and you need the somatic part. You need the felt experience of it. It's not enough to imagine it. Imagination is the beginning. So we bring the earth element in for the final round, and then we say, okay, you've seen yourself do it really well. It's very dissociative. It's like another person, but it still looks like you. Now we need to see it in first person, not second or third. So now we imagine closing our eyes, and then we see ourselves immersed in that scene, fully somatically engaged physically, and our body and mind is now involved. Conscious mind and our basic mind, our physical mind, our Una Pili self is involved. And so now you're seeing yourself in this scene that you've seen done really well now, six times, three by you, three by someone else, and then you engage it, and now your body mind is picking it up, how to do that really wonderful new behavior really well. So now it's on a, an earth somatic level and the pattern becomes instilled in the body. Now, you know, obviously this is just kind of pointing out a method, um, but the logic behind it is actually quite compelling, right? Um, we're witnessing our relations and owning um, our part in them. And then we're opening ourselves up to uh, refining that, which is a, in a sense, as a ceremony or a gift to others um, that um, not only do we honor the fact that we have these relations in our lives, but that um, we care enough about them to own our bid in them so that we can transform them into something better. Um, this level of taking responsibility um, allows us to transcend, um, you know, the victim mode, of feeling victimized by somebody outside. <clears throat> Rather, it can allow us the opportunity to, even if we're the persecutor in this, we can change that. Um, we can open ourselves to a higher way of being in, a more spiritual way of being in relationship to others. So, the air realm, hi Audrey, good morning. So, the air realm gives us this amazing opportunity, right, to, um, to be mindful in how we relate to each other. Um, and, you know, each day you can take a different person um, that you're in relationship with and go through this pattern like this, you know, similar to this pattern for the, that I was talking about with the uh, new behavior generator. Um, you can create new ways of looking at things. The, I, good morning, Anastasia. So this is what we're, we're looking for is a way to break through and to be more mindful, own our projections, to call them back and to say, you know what, I keep reacting to this person in this way. What if, what if I were to release that? What if I were to l release the old stories, the old ways of thinking? And mainly because I want to open myself to something higher. And if I'm attaching myself to these loops in relationships with others that keep binding me to these, um, this stasis, this homeostatic kind of bind where I can't move, because we're part of, our relationships are part of us. And if we can begin to transform those internal relationships with parts of our own nature, which we did a lot in the earth realm with the, the guides and the rest, we can do it in the outer world um, as a reflection of our inner world. And so we start to, um, in a good way, a sacred way, take ownership of, of our part in these dynamics. In fact, we can take a magical role and say, um, because I'm a part of this relationship and because God's between us, right, the third element, then um, if I transform myself and this part of myself that I'm challenged with in this other person, 
if I transform that in within myself and then bring that medicine into the field between me and the other person, I will have uh, done something not only to transform my experience, but another person's, and then that can spread from there. So uh, the first thing it calls for is presence. And, you know, it's ironic because presence in a mindful way is saying come out of your somatic uh, sensory experience where you're being very sensitive instead um, becoming a little bit um, higher not so emotional or kind of sensory oriented but a little bit more kind of higher self where you're you're saying well I'm not you know a Buddhist would say I I'm not sure maybe right so you get into maybe logic kind of fuzzy logic and you start to say well I don't really know if that was what they intended to do or say. Let me ask. Let me ask them and let me receive information. Let me be a bit more um, inquisitive and more receptive for something new to come through because I hope that there is something better. Maybe it's not. And still you have that opportunity to transform it. But presence is asking us to not only get out of our, our emotional body, our kind of cellular beliefs and feelings and our kind of, you know, our little little at atomic sort of walled all self. And it's saying, open up to something greater. Start relating to the world around you. Be receptive to the world. Engage the world across that membrane of experience. And that is a level of mindfulness that isn't in our head, but it's more in the center here, in the center of consciousness. So that's a field of God between, right? Um, as Martin Buber says, I say it all the time, but Martin Buber says, um, I believe God is more between us than within us. And so when we are in relationship and we have that mindfulness, <clears throat> every communication, every contact and, context and, and contact like this one are all um, sacred moments um, if, you, if we allow them to be. So, hmm. In that way, this morning, I always, with my clients, before I do a session, I always do some sort of check-in where either I go through and I imagine seeing the whole experience or I ask their guides to show me something about where they are, what do I need to, what do I need to know about them for the session, how can I be of service, and that sort of thing. And like many in the kind of intuitive fields of, of doing this work, um, I have different tools that I rely on to um, help me to see something maybe that I'm not. And again, I use these tools in a way to break outside of my own sort of cellular thinking or feeling process and say, well, is there more that I'm missing? The wonderful thing about working with a person's inner guide, this is a commercial. When you learn how to work with guides, you have this access to information that just is not it's logical, it's so like, oh, of course, but it's so different than our own ego minds. I have ideas all the time, I have reactions all the time, I have feelings all the time about what my clients are going through. And I sit with that and I allow it to be because I think it's, okay, well, it is important. However, the moment I ask their guides about the same situation, all of a sudden I get this very clear, simple, concise insight which pretty good, says it's more than me because I like to babble, okay? So guides are an amazing part of it. In this one today, I, I chose to do the I Ching. And the I Ching is an ancient uh, Chinese form of divination. And sometimes I use yarrow stalks. They look like these kind of sticks. And you, you use 50 of them. And, um, and it's a pretty lengthy process. <laughs> um, it takes probably like 15 minutes to get to an answer of one query, so um, it can take quite a while. I like that. Taking time, slowing down, actually kind of grounds you in the moment and gets you into relationship with this moment, right, this experience. So there's something about taking slower ways of coming to know. However, in this one, I have this wonderful deck called the, do I have the box? It's called the Tao Oracle, T-A-O Oracle, O-R-A-L-C, O-R-A-C-L-E. It's a beautiful book um, by this woman, I think, Ma, M-A, Deva, D-E-V-A, Padma. And this is what the back of the card looks like. It's a really pretty card. And on the front, 
it shows the different um, uh, I Ching readings. So this one is number 16, and you'll see it's Earth over Rain and Lake. And this is on the other side, the uh, trigrams that are, so three broken lines is Earth, and one broken line with two solid lines is Rain and Lake. And each one of them represents a different expression or, or, or kind of um, alchemical expression of nature, and they reflect something happening in our own nature. Um, bring trigrams together, you get a hexagram, and it creates this whole experience here, another dynamic. So this one says um, approach, number 16. And in approach, when I'm looking at today, when it's about relationships, um, I can see that it's already beginning to inform me a bit. It's about lightening up, you know, coming out of the earth heaviness, um, an arrival, you know, just like a new, um, we have all these wonderful new buds around the yard, all these different crocuses and tulips, everything's starting to pop up out of this gray earth. Um, so an arrival, um, advancing, warm reception, prosperous conditions, increased influence, hopefulness, and lightening up. So these are, I love this card, number 16. If you look it up online, you can Google uh, I Ching, which is I-C-H-I-N-G. It's I Ching, but it's pronounced I Ching. And you can look up number 16, and it gives some really wonderful insights into approach. So we're approaching this lighter way, this, this um, lighter way of being. And then I pulled, that one actually kind of fell out. It kept falling out, so I looked at it. Then I picked three cards, and I tend to do that three cards kind of past or, you know, what's the foundation of what the issue is or what I'm dealing with, whether it's a client or whether something like this. What's the middle card is what's present now, and the third card, the final card, is where is all this heading or a kind of um, what is, a, you know, the challenge of this. So, or what, you know, what you could be dealing with otherwise. So, in the first one, it showed number 13, and it's companionship. And, of course, we can really see how um, in this, you know, Air Realm 1, it is about relationships, about companionship. And it's, it's heaven. It's three solid lines over a broken line uh, with two solid lines. Two yang with a yin center is fire. So we have fire, we have uh, heaven over fire, and it says it's about companionship, number 13. And on that, some of the key notes are friendliness, mutual respect, shared goals, interdependence, agreement, and strengthening bonds. A great card for, um, for Air One today, right? In the middle of it all is number 44, the Attraction of Opposites. A really pretty card. These cards are gorgeous. And this one again is a heaven over um, wind, soon. So you have um, this uh, uh, these Attraction of Opposites. And in this one, this is kind of where we're at now. Um, magnetism, uh, passionate encounter, meeting halfway, um, is talking about sexual union. So we're looking at that part of relationship that is also romantic relationship, about seduction, temptation, uh, magnetism, all these different things. And, and it's coupling a sexual un union and the rest. And this is a big part of the uh, Air Realm 1, which is about one-on-one -on -one relationships, sexual relationships, um, uh, these sacred unions that we have with others. And also these um, these dynamic attractions. You know, this is asking us to become aware of what's going on here. To not just kind of fall into it, but to rise into it, rise into this loving relationship, right? So that's a lot right there um, about uh, relationships, um, and it's kind of interesting. And and it's true. All of these. Now that I look at them, they all have. Let's see. I'll put them this way. That's what I love about these cards, they're so synchronistic, I couldn't have chosen them better than if I just did them as my own. They all have two people in them, right? So this is actually in the middle. So I get this one first, companionship, attraction of opposites, and this one is conflict, number five. 
So this is the other side of relationships. Thank you, I Ching. It says, um, we all have a will to power. Hey, good morning, Stefan. Uh, we all have a will to power um, <clears throat> that can bring up hostility, jealousy, stubbornness, aggression, fear, competitive, competitiveness, and controversy. So, as we can see, there's a lot to air one. There's a lot of different types of relationships, whether it's romantic, whether we're struggling against someone else and kind of head-to-head -head sort of thing, or whether we come into this form of uh, companionship where there's this mutuality there. Um, these are very, three very powerful ways to, to um, begin to look at what are, um, what are the dynamics that we are engaged in in our daily lives. So for the rest of this week to, uh, um, for Air One, um, I would ask that you, um, we all um, focus on our dynamics and our relationships. Um, I have been since I've become aware of it, and um, I've been challenged by my own, uh, good morning, uh, my own um, places where I'm really strong is good, but the places where I'm weaker, um, where I feel more challenged, I tend maybe to check out. I don't know if maybe is the right word, but I have my form of checking out. Um, I can overcommit regularly and not, um, and then sort of um, uh, back away because I've overcommitted to too many people or to too many things. Um, and I notice how that affects my relationships. And I notice the patterns of how when I'm in overwhelm, how I then um, go into this, my way of regressing, my way, um, I forget to call someone back, or um, I miss a text, or because I'm, all right, too many emails. There's so many things in this world of over-communication and over-connection that can really throw us off of our center and, um, and affect our relationships. So this week is about um, owning all of that and getting a sense of it. Um, for yourself. And so I'll endeavor to throw up um, in this uh, group uh, memes that um, speak to that or address that somehow. And I'll definitely um, find videos to um, that practices that can help uh, help us all move through these areas. And I would love it if you did the same. If you find things or if you know of practices that are really great for relationships, or quotes or memes or you know whatever music even um, please share them with us this week uh, air one uh, and in the spirit of air one one uh, I have to say that I'm I'm very grateful to have uh, this relationship with each one of you and um, as well as with the collective which will be week two so um, and forming a, a connection that um, is helpful to all of us so thank you guys for continuing through. Welcome to Air One. We made it through the fire. We made it through the water. We made it through the earth. And, um, and we're up in the air realm now, coming to life, springing into action, and connecting with others in a good way, a good mindful way. So I hope that this is helping. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, please continue to do so. And we'll, um, we have three more weeks before we are... Uh, through the full circle, right? And, um, and the fourth one will be the completion of that. And so when we are done with the fourth week, um, we will prepare to start the cycle all over again. So thank you guys for being a part of this. I hope you continue. Um, the cycles just get more and more interesting as you uh, recycle through them. Um, and, uh, and the more you get to understand the flow, the alchemy, of the flow, the more that um, you can be in support of others that are just going through it. So I invite you, um, at, as you are interested, to get more and more involved in the process and to share more from your perspective because the whole goal of this is really to have shared perspectives. I'm priming the pump with my own, but I by no means think my way is the only way. I just wanna hold a space for all of our ways to come through because that's when it gets really interesting, right? So have a great day, have a great week. I hope to see you in the Soul Lab group and I look forward to more communication, more relation. All right, bye guys.